I have never been so naive as to believe that we can get beyond our racial divisions in a single election cycle or with a single candidate. But I have asserted a firm conviction, a conviction rooted in my faith in God and my faith in the American people, that working together, we can move beyond some of our old racial wounds and that, in fact, we have no choice. We have no choice if we are to continue on the path of a more perfect union. Four years ago, President Obama's powerful speech on race in America came on the heels of relentless attacks about his association with the Reverend Jeremiah Wright. This election season, some of the religious community believe it's time for Mitt Romney to step up to the podium and give his own speech on race, specifically addressing his Mormon faith. Theology professor Obrey Hendricks, writing in the Huffington Post today, points to several passages in the Book of Mormon which condemn black people as cursed. For example, after they had dwindled in unbelief, they became a dark and loathsome and a filthy people, full of idleness and all manner of abominations. Pretty heavy stuff. Beyond their next religious text, African Americans were not allowed to fully participate in the Mormon priesthood until 1978. Mitt Romney, who was once a leader in the, church, uh, in the Mormon church, addressed the issue in late 2007 on Meet the Press. I love my faith, and I'm not going to distance myself in any way from my faith. But you can see what I believed and what my family believed by looking at our, at our lives. My dad marched with Martin Luther King. My mom was a tireless crusader for civil rights. I was anxious to see a change in, in my church. I can remember when, when I heard about the change being made. I was driving home from, I think it was law school. I heard it on the radio, and I pulled over and, and literally wept. Um, even to this day, it's emotional. And so it's very deep and fundamental in my, in my life and, and my most core beliefs that all people are children of God. One of the people who thinks Romney's statement doesn't go far enough is the author of the Huffington Post article I mentioned, Obrey Hendricks. He is a professor of biblical interpretation at the New York Theological Seminary and author of The Universe Bends Toward Justice. Professor Hendricks, thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure. What does Mitt Romney need to do, if anything, in your opinion? Well, you know, first I want to make it clear that I am not accusing Mitt Romney of being a racist. I have no evidence that that's the case. But um, I think that given the, the, very, uh, the racist history of the Mormon Church for 150 years, the first 150 years of existence, it uh, held all black people as accursed, the accursed seed of Cain. I think that, uh, and, and that didn't change until he was over 30 years old. What he needs to do, I think, is to assure America that <clears throat> he does not maintain any residual feelings that uh, black people are, are in, inferior because that's what his religion taught uh, for 150 years that black folks were accursed and therefore inferior to the unaccursed whites. In that sound clip that we played, did he not do that? Well, I, I think there's a difference in saying, I mean, it's very admirable that he believes that all people have equal rights, should have equal rights under the law. He also said that he felt that all people uh, had equal rights to, uh, uh, to get into heaven. But uh, that's not the same as saying that he also believes that all people are inherently equal, that no one is inferior to anyone else. I mean, that's a very important distinction because as we've seen in our nation's history, that when leaders did not, uh, were not fully convinced that black people uh, were the equals of, of, uh, of, of whites, that we were inferior in some way, they also treated our interests as inferior and we suffered quite a bit. Do you, think, do you think he should address this issue in the manner that President Obama addressed race and religion back when he was dealing with the criticism of his association with Jeremiah Wright? Oh, no question. I mean, to assure Americans that he is, that he can be the president of all Americans equally. I mean, President Obama had to do that as a result of... And you think Mitt Romney needs to I, do that? Yes, yes. I mean, President Obama had to do it because of a few statements by one man. We're, we're talking about uh, Romney, who was, who grew up in this faith for... Uh, into manhood believing that, well, at least accepting this doctrine that black people were inferior. And let's, let's face it, um, this was taught very deeply in that faith. It's not yeah. just some overlay. That's, it's a doctrine and it's codified in their holy book. If this man were to, to become president of the United States, do you think the Congressional Black Caucus has an obligation to go down this road? Um, 
go down this road. No, in other words, uh, expect some explanation from Mitt Romney on how he's going to deal with minorities in this country. I think that we all deserve um, an answer uh, right away. Um, and this isn't condemning him. This, right, exactly. this, is, this is the vetting process. E exactly. Yeah. Giving him a chance to put all Americans at ease, uh, that he's going to be a president equally of all people, that he's able to do that. Because until he comes right out and says, no, I do not believe that this is divinely ordained, that these are uh, orders from God in, in, in my holy book, it raises questions as to whether there's well, some uh, uh, residual belief in, in fear. Well, I, I mean, in the Book of Mormon, I mean, what I read after they had dwindled in unbelief, they became a dark and loathsome and a filthy people full of idleness and the manner of abominations. I mean, that is heavy stuff. Oh, and that's not all. They are, uh, you, you know, know I, I, I haven't read the Book of Mormon, but uh, is there other stuff in there that... Oh, yeah, yeah. There, I, I cite three or four other passages in my article okay. in the Huffington Post today that are just as bad, or if not worse. All right. Other GOP candidates like Gingrich and Santorum have had more publicized issues with making what many people think are, are racist comments. Is this a problem with the Republican Party, in your opinion? Yeah, I think it's a problem with the Re Republican Party. That's, they've always had a problem with race. The uh, Republican Party has always wanted to conserve uh, power and wealth uh, where it already was. And as we know from most of our uh, nation's history, it was with the rich whites in America. And, and, and if you go back to, to Buckley, uh, William Buckley, who was the godfather of modern conservatism, he was uh, very much a racist. Uh, you know, the, he, he came out and said that black people were inferior people, and so we, uh, we sh did not deserve the same kind of policy considerations as others. He said that. That's documented. Professor Hendricks, thank you for your time tonight. My pleasure. Thanks thank so you. much. Up next, Scott Walker leads the nation in job loss.